episode 30, a summary of the social credit monetary reform. So what is the social credit monetary reform all about? Hmm. Douglas social credit, not to be confused with Chinese social credit, is a set of proposals to alter the financial infrastructure upon which our economy is built. The purpose of these modifications is to re-engineer the financial system so that it can finally benefit everyone in an effective, efficient and fair manner. At present, the system disproportionately benefits an oligarchic few at the expense of the common good. In order to grasp, in a nutshell, the technical details of the social credit proposals, let us imagine a theatre as a metaphor for our economy. What would a healthy, good economy look like if it were likened to a theatre? In the good economy theatre, there would be enough seats to house the whole of the local population, one seat per resident. The shows scheduled at the theatre would be of ample variety and of high quality. They would also be presented at suitable times and as frequently as demand requires. In other words, a successful economy would be one which meets the needs of the population for goods and services in an effective, efficient and fair manner, to the extent that this production and delivery are physically realizable. At our current level of technology, this would imply a phenomenal world of abundance, security, freedom and leisure. Clearly, our present economies do not fulfill this desired potential. To one extent or another, our economies resemble the bad economy theatre, where there are not enough seats to accommodate the whole population. The shows are of limited variety and lower quality, and they are not presented at the most suitable times or as frequently as demand necessitates. So what causes this continual failure? The financial system. The present system is not properly designed to provide us with an accurate picture of our useful productive capacity or of the flow of real wealth. Instead, it systematically <laughs> underestimates both. On the level of production, we don't have access to sufficient producer credit to catalyze all useful production and so legitimate needs can go unmet. To refer back to our analogy, it's as if we do not have enough money to build the good economy theatre, even though such a theatre is within our physical capacity to construct. So we end up instead with a building that is half its needed size and only achieves a bit more than the minimal level of due functionality. On the level of consumption, we are not automatically endowed with sufficient income to purchase in full whatever is being produced, so that the market can clear and all of its associated costs can be liquidated. This is because the existing financial system is not self-liquidating. It generates costs and hence prices at a faster rate than it distributes incomes to consumers. The situation is complicated by the fact that the same system will only issue money as a debt or a debt equivalent. In order to compensate for this gap and to avoid recessions, pretexts must be found for the creation and issuance of additional debt money at the correct rate of increase. It would be as if our economic theatre, regardless of how good or bad it was as a theatre, had a ticket office that did not, as a matter of policy, automatically print and distribute sufficient tickets so as to ensure that all of the available seats would be occupied whenever a show is scheduled to play. In order to get the more tickets needed to fill the theatre to capacity, we would have to be engaged in the construction of additional theatres, whether needed or not. This would be the equivalent of forced economic growth, especially capital production. Capture tickets from theatres in neighbouring towns, this would be akin to exporting more than you import or else create and issue a special group of tickets to customers in exchange for an IOU. This will be equivalent to the issuance of consumer loans. So how do we fix this situation? We must make the financial figures reflect the physical economic facts. To rectify the production side of the problem, Social Credit proposes that we base the money supply directly on the useful productive capacity of a society and that we then create and issue sufficient producer credit so that what is physically desirable and possible shall also be financially possible. 
To address the consumption side of the problem, Social Credit says that the misdirected and excessive effort involved in forced economic growth is not at all required. We can simply reform the ticket office by changing its policy. Subordinate the figures to the reality and make it so that enough tickets will be printed and issued for all of the seats available, as, when and where required. The extra consumer credits, the additional tickets of our analogy, would be issued in the form of a national dividend, a payment distributed to each citizen independently of employment status, as a shareholder in society and in the form of a compensated price or retail discount on all consumer goods and services. By adding a flow of these debt-free consumer credits to complement the regular flow of incomes, Prices and incomes can be brought into balance and the financial system can finally achieve a self-liquidating and distributive equilibrium. And just like that, the good economy theatre can become our reality. The key is to use the money system to distribute power to everyone, instead of using it as a tool to concentrate power over others in the hands of a few. Let's run the financial system as if it were a gigantic cooperative in which we all had a stake as shareholders and from which we all had a right to draw benefits in the forms of a dividend and a discount. This animated series was sponsored by the Clifford Hugh Douglas Institute for the study and promotion of social credit. For more information on Douglas Social Credit, please visit socred.org or socialcredit.com.au. Be sure to like this video and please subscribe to our channel.